Hey guys, this is part one of a two-part story. We're hosting part one. Mr. Ripper is hosting part two. The link's down below. Go check out his channel. If you're from here from Mr. Ripper's channel, hello. And if you're going over there from our channel, say hello from Neck Farm. And we'll see you at the end of the video. Our group once had the broliest paladin barbarian ever. His name was Osmar, the half-orc paladin of insert homebrew god of fair fighting here. Osmar's background was that he was a member of a barbarian tribe that had been given as a baby as a gift to a missionary by his tribe, as a sign of peace between their tribes, to go marry to one of their leader's daughters. Since the church leader had no daughters, he made them a son of the cloth, so to speak. Now, Osmar wasn't that bright, but he was strong as a team of oxen, used a two-handed club bigger than most men, and could, given time and effort, find evil simply by watching the entire world, picking up the man who he detected as evil and then bellowing at him without stopping for hours on end until the guy broke down. He was utterly patient and unstoppable by any normal means beyond total bodily dismemberment in his pursuit of justice. His class was basically the GM choosing to ignore alignment requests, so he was a paladin with levels in homebrew paladin barbarian prestige class which broke down to rage against the dying light. Now this was in a game with mostly TN and evil fucks. Only he and I were actually good. I was a chaotic good cleric rogue, ex-gang member turned to god who spent most of his time boozing and whoring, but who had been assigned to Osmar to keep him out of trouble. The other PCs included a chaotic evil blackguard girl, a true neutral druid, and a neutral evil assassin who had huge daddy issues, and a lawful evil monk of the god of tyrants. These are pack of evil bastards. Yeah. What the fuck's up with this clip? We met when they were sent to hunt us down and stop me preaching the word. Osmar beat each of them unconscious and, for some reason, got it into his head that since they were all still alive after he had beaten them, our god wanted them alive and to change their ways. Over the course of the game, he slowly, through sheer stubborn ass will, turned them up the alignment spectrum. The monk became lawful good and dropped his god for ours. The assassin took a few levels in ranger and saw Osmar as the father he never had, if his dad had been six foot eight and green. <laughs> the druid remained the same but stopped working for assholes. The black guard though, she was the most entertaining to watch. You see, her player wasn't an ass, but he was a power gamer and he took flaws he never thought would come into it. One day, early on, we came across her home village, Osmar leading the procession in chains and keeping an eye on the criminal scum to avoid any incident. We go into the inn and buy a room. The innkeep takes one look at the blackguard, blanches and then leaves in a hurry, telling us to take the room for free. Ten minutes later, there's a mob outside. Apparently, the blackguard has a really angsty background involving her brother being a dick to her and etc etc. Needless to say, when she left, she left a mark on several people in the village, including the mayor's son, who was a prick, and one of the main reasons she was a self-serving, black-hearted bitch. Osmar goes outside to see what the fuss is. They demanded her head. Osmar takes one look at the crowd and says, No! She is mine and I will teach her to be good. The crowd is incredulous and demands proof. Osmar carries her outside over his shoulder. Osmar puts her next to him and in front of the crowd, takes off her chains and says, Say you're sorry for what you did to them. Never! Say you're sorry for what you did. You hurt a lot of innocent people, apparently. I couldn't care less how many innocent people were hurt. Crack! As he backhands her across the stage, then walks over and picks her up by the shoulders, looks her straight in the eyes and yells, Say you're sorry for hurting the innocent! Osmar has very high intimidate. Osmar rules a 19. <laughs> Osmar is a fucking scary half-orc sometimes. She bends in the face of his righteous fury for just a second. I'm sorry, but but what he did to me? What who did? The mayor's son. Osmar turns towards the crowd and uses detect evil. Three people turn up. The mayor, his son, and the head of the guard. Turns out, the plot hook for this was the mayor was meant to hire us to go hunt down some ex-convicts who were actually people who had smacked his son out for screwing with their girlfriends after drugging them and so forth. And the black guard had the masochist disadvantage. She failed a will save and became obsessed with Osmar and his backhand of justice. And Osmar was one of the first people to actually listen to her when she said things like, the mayor's son is a prick. 
So the obsession, the player decided, being a god tier role player with no sense of shame when in character, was going to fall in love with Osmar, which Osmar didn't notice until about 15 sessions later when she confessed. Osmar's reaction, he sat there for a while and looked at the now true neutral ex-Blackguard and simply said, if you learn to behave and be good and you ask nicely, I might spank you. (laughs) (laughs) Then nodded and continued on his way. By the end of the game, she was a paladin of that S&M god and in the final encounter, she was offered a place at the big bad evil guy's side if she turned her back on the party. She didn't because of Osmar and his sexy half-orc love. Osmar fucking rocked. Anyone want to hear about his confrontation with the lawful evil tyrant who challenged him to a honourable duel? In quotations, (laughs) honourable duel. (laughs) Well, the big bad evil guy for the game was a lawful evil king turned tyrant, being backed up by the god of tyrants, a long forgotten god, which basically meant that he wasn't worshipped actively but anyone who was a tyrant counted as a worshipper of his, despite worshipping other gods. So he got auto-cleric levels. The game was all about Osmar, and I was going to this new, unknown country to try and spread the word of our religion at the start, until we realised our king was a dickhead of the greatest magnitude. At which point, Osmar got disgruntled by the evil in the air around him, and decided that he was going to turn this country around. (laughs) <laughs> Sounds like Northern Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of us were along for the ride on the righteous tidal wave that was Osmar. After many epic adventures, the game comes to a climax with a revolt, led by Osmar, me, and the ranger assassin in the capital city, which pretty much failed. We were stuck behind a barricade, with the king's men raining hell down on us for days on end, us giving almost as good as we get. But there's too many of them. You know how it works. When Osmar sees the king watching from the sidelines and bellows a challenge for leadership of the country at him, one of the king's laws was that you could challenge anyone for anything. Might makes right. Now his entire army hears this challenge and obviously they know he can't back down from it. So the king says, Sure, whatever. Get my fucking huge sword and armour and let's do this. Then your entire revolt is mine, and it's off to the ball-twisting implements with you all. (laughs) Even the women. (laughs) Cock and ball torture! (laughs) Circle is drawn in neutral ground. The two parties meet, with the ex-black guard as Osmar's second, and the king's general as his second. Now the thing about this king and his relationship with the god is, he was the last tyrant alive at this time. And if there are no worshippers of a forgotten god, they are gone for good and a new one will appear when and as they are needed. And Osmar is a fucking good fighter, so this god is shitting enough bricks to build New York. (laughs) He tells the king to cheat, takes over him and puts on a few poisoned rings. When he shakes Osmar's hand, shwink, minus 10 to strength and constitution. (laughs) As well as being blinded and a few other mixed nasties in the form of a liquid curse. Osmar's greatest abilities down the drain. Before Osmar can call out his treachery, the king smacks him in the gob with his pommel and the fight begins. Stick it in the gob. (laughs) (laughs) Shut up and stick it in the gob. (laughs) Osmar does his best, but needless to say, he's getting fucked up bad. When the god king makes the mistake all tyrants make, he starts gloating, going on about how the weak are pathetic and don't deserve protection. And how men are wolves and he is the biggest motherfucking alpha wolf there is. <laughs> About how good is stupid, honour is restraint, and respect for others is pathetic. Osmar is annoyed at the puny man dissing on his principles. <laughs> Osmar pulls a trick we've not seen in months of levelling, because he's never needed it. Osmar righteous rages! Feats kick in, results are rolled, tables brought out. Osmar is healed, back on full health, basically sweats the poison out and gives off a bellow that sends half the king's men running away with liquid fear running down the insides of their legs. (laughs) (laughs) The spaghetti falls out. A man possessed by God itself stumbles at his bellow. This roar of anger against the sheer injustice of the world and the fury against the darkness he and the man he possessed represented. That malicious evil that thinks it can get away with things because good men won't fight back or aren't smart enough to fight them. 
And then Osmar brings up his weapon and stands over the fallen king for a moment before saying five words. Get up and face me. He waits until his opponent stands and then swings his club into him, breaking his entire shield arm in one hit as he tries to protect himself. The king screams out to his troops to fire on the battlefield. They do so. Osmar asks the GM if he can roll divine intervention. He fails, but uses a once a day item to re-roll twice and passes. The arrows and bolts stop midair. The guard tries to enter the arena and is boiled in his armour by the fire of the line that surrounds them, effectively disintegrating him in his suit as the god of fair battle himself looks down on this betrayal of his greatest warrior and goes, No, this shall be a fair battle. Osmar brings his weapon in again and drives the crowned helmet so deep into the man's head that it could never be removed from the body of the armour again, then stands bellowing in a circle. The god of tyrants tries to escape, taking no physical form, but Osmar grapples and starts hitting it using smite evil, literally holding and beating on a dying god down in the dueling ring, using nothing but the force of his own righteousness and hatred of evil, and punches it in its evil face, until it stops spasming and finally disperses away. Honestly, Osmar's just a curb stone. <laughs> you ever seen Martin history X? <laughs> Something like that. Osmar was now king. Now. Nah. Now. Hey now, Brian Kay. <laughs> Osmar took the crown that his new generals offered him and looked at it and then nodded and said, I'm not smart enough to be a king. Osmar gave this away to his church, creating a council of 12 members, six clergymen, six randomly chosen peasants who each served for a maximum time, and he went back to the road. When asked why, why turn down this great offer, this chance to be a king and have everything he wanted? He answered, because I do not need it. I have all I wish here. It's my place to fight evil face to face, not as a figurehead. I have evil before me my weapon at my side, good and just friends to battle alongside, and the war eternal to battle in the name of my god. What more could make me happy? Osmar then moves on, with all of us being dragged along in his wake. What happens next? I don't know. We're continuing the campaign in a few weeks, after the GM had a chance to rest and plan. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed part one. As we said at the start, this is a collaboration with Mr. Rupper. So links down below. Go ahead, check out part two. Go Definitely. check out Daddy Rep. Yeah, check it out. Subscribe. You know, all that other good stuff. And if you come over here, I like, can you know, subscribe and all that other good stuff. Um, I don't know. I really enjoyed this story. I, you know what gets me about Paladin? Sometimes Paladins can be a bit... Overbearing. Overbearing and uptight. Let's yeah. be serious. <laughs> Whereas, like, you know, Osmar, he just wants to, like... He just wants to live a good life. Yeah. You know, he just, he, he's a... He's a sweet child, you know. <laughs> and he got a sweet, a sweet summer child. <laughs> and he's sweet up just carb stomped a fucking god. And like the story does climax, so you know, if you enjoyed this, definitely, definitely go over and see part two. Yeah, you have to see out part two just to see what actually happens because you'd be mad not to. Yeah. And I really enjoyed yeah. this, so you know, I think you guys will enjoy it too. But look, as always, guys, remember like, subscribe, check out Mr. Ripper part two, subscribe there, subscribe here, subscribe everywhere. Yee! Yee! <laughs> um, we'll see you in the next video. All right? Bye!